Pints at uh, the, the live stream now. I guess a show where we try to recreate the giddy witty format that is the green room. I guess where we're after gigs we're all just talking crap. Um, so it's real fun. We have a really fun show for you tonight. We have music from all the way from Cleveland to the US. It's quite American. We have music from Cleveland, and we have an amazing. Emmy Award winning comedian all the way from LA. Uh, we're going to talk to him later. But let's begin with some lovely music, shall we? Shall we? Yeah, I think we should. Lovely. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone in between, give it up for the wonderful Mary! Hello! Okay. from Mary Catches later. Uh, so guys, I guess I should introduce you to my wonderful co-host. Give it up for Mr. David Strutt. Hello. How's everyone? Thank you for having me. Uh, so thank you for coming to your own show. And give it up for Pedro Guerra, what's the what's Portuguese up? giant. Guys, how's everybody? How's everybody on this beautiful Sunday? I guess it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's so nice. We're, we're still here. Your room looks glorious, here. Here. Pedro. Sorry? Yeah. Your room looks like it looks like a scene where someone's dying at the end of a movie and it just kind of goes to white and sunny. You look like you're, you know what I mean. That's because it is. Um, oh, no, yeah. it's, I, I get like a lot of direct sunlight. Such so a pretty cool room. Like the sun uh, sets in my room. So that's why, uh, you know. I love the way you're like, yeah, but in all seriousness, guys, the real reason is um, the the angle of my room relative it's to the, the sun. It's the angle, like the yeah, sun. Yeah, yeah. It's, Let's not be a silly about this. Natural sunlight, you know. <laughs> Uh, are we renaming this podcast to Talking Property? Are we? Uh, I yeah, know we're exactly. in Dublin and we're like <laughs> obsessed with the rental market, but like, come on, boys, this is yeah. not the fun banter <laughs> I was hoping for. No, 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 no. Let's talk about this because you know we got to talk about windows and sun face things. You know, that's there's an audience for that, and we put comedy with it. You know, rent <laughs> ah, a... rent a comic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, uh, we have some comments. Hello to all the listeners at home. We have some. Com- we have a shout out from Jake White, all the way from New York, for Mary, <laughs> who was Ooh. wonderful. Was that lovely? That was so nice. I like. I, I, lo- oh, I love yeah, Mary's I music. I've literally I had that- this one song from Mary stuck in my w- head for a week. 
Anyway, so, sorry, yeah, Pedro, you were saying? No, no, just I love how, like, having this amazing uh, music guest to start the show, it just kind of gives the whole energy such a positive vibe. It's amazing. So thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. For, for we music. also have Tea Towel God that says, hey, and how are you guys? Um, yeah. Hi. Hey, yeah. uh, Tea Towel <laughs> God, we bow before you. Um, so well, God. The one true God, Tia Talata. Uh, <laughs> guys, will we bring on our guest? Let's bring the guest. Uh, right, guys. Our guest today is the wonderful Robbie Hoffman. You might know her from presenting shows like the Chris Geddard Presents Show. She was a writer on the Chris Geddard, the Chris Geddard Show on Fusion TV. Uh, she's just an all-around badass. Give it up for Robbie Hoffman. Hi. <laughs> I'm super happy. For some reason, all of you are looking straight. Yeah, we messed up the jingle, but uh, our, my bad, that was completely on me. Uh, Wait, do we want to do the jingle again? Because I was complaining during the jingle. Yes, yeah, so let's do the jingle again, okay, and we all again. have to dance to give it. It's our brand new, first time ever having a jingle. Let's go for it. Are you ready? Okay, yes. Let's do this. How, how good was my dancing? It was like this. You, you dance like every true uh, lesbian should dance. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm so powerful. Like, I am looking, I swear I'm looking straight. But look, look at my angle versus all of you. I'm like, is there something wrong with my computer? Is there no, a way no. to screen this? Is that why the uh, camera is right there? Because I oh. think if you... If you this look camera's into the right camera. in front of me. It's my computer camera. I, I don't know why oh. I'm looking angled. It's like ridiculous. I mean, most people I, could I move feel like from something like this. I, I first of all, I want to recognize that I understand that most people will move forward from this and go on to have a great podcast. Yeah, but no, maybe, it's good. We're, we're... no. Let's discuss this. I think this is this is something important. I die on. These are the things I die on. Like we have so many things to talk about, but I'm like, why did they get to look forward and I'm looking into the abyss? I don't know where. <laughs> Uh, in fairness, look kind of looking up a little bit. All right. In fairness, in fairness, like the left half of the screen are the two straight boys, and they're looking straight. And like you and me, Robbie, technology is just against us. We're kind of angled off to one side. Like, and also, I am a little bit insulted that you said I looked straight. That's not cool. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, how do you identify? How do people identify? I identify as straight. No, okay. I'm kidding. The only no, the only. I was joking the other day that the only gay thing about me really is that I'm gay, but other than that, I'm really not gay. <laughs> I live Bear. a pretty, you know, um, non-gay, I, I don't know. I forget that I'm gay because everything is gay and I'm just like in a regular <laughs> world now. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't feel. Uh, yeah, that, it's like, yeah, we're just all, well, isn't everybody a lesbian now? Isn't that the meme that's going around? Like, we're all just like you hauling at home, like, or, you know. Are you a lesbian? Home. Are you gay? I'm queer. I'm pansexual. Queer. Yeah, I'm queer too. Queer is the best thing, eh? Nice like, and vague. Will, well, it's like, I had to be a lesbian. Like, it sounds diseased. It does not sound good. <laughs> it doesn't sound like you want to be that. Like when I hear I'm like lesbian sounds for sure. Like you know, I'd rather have Crohn's. Mm. It yeah, sounds yeah. more dangerous than Crohn's. And queer is kind of short and snappy. Queer is right away. Queer like is just like thing. you don't. Know, it is what it is. It's who cares. Yeah. It's like you're. Yeah, you're queer. I like it a lot. And like only people who want to put specific labels on things that aren't a dinner for themselves. We don't trust them, Robbie. Our people right. know better than that. We know better. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We have some comments coming in. Uh, T Towel okay. God says I am by you. Uh, oh, sorry, like, bisexual. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, we have a bisexual. No, no, you, we see you. You're valid. Uh, we are trash people. Has said Robbie is the only one of the only comedians who didn't think I was gay at her show. Uh, <laughs> Wait, who, who, Robbie oh, is the okay. only comedian who didn't think I was gay at her show. Yeah, I think that might be, is that, I, is that, which one of you is that? Because there's We Are Trash People is three different people, and I'm guessing it's not Forrest, uh, so it's either Emily Pineapple or Molly. Listen, some people like to define their own sexuality for themselves, but if you come to my show, 
one of the few shows left out there that I will tell you what you are. And it is final. It is final. There's no, I, I know that you want to have an opinion about it, but I will determine what your sexuality is. And then that's it for the rest of your life. That could so, be quite useful. And, it Actually, is useful. Yeah. I find it's a, it's a simpler it's 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 a simpler approach. I mean, wish somebody did that to me when I was a kid. Uh, oh wait, they did, but they got it wrong. Uh, they got it wrong. I always get it right. There's the fix. <laughs> Uh, we also have a comment from a good friend of Hysteria, Naomi Lee, who has said, round two of trying really hard to like Pedro. Oh, uh, Jesus. <laughs> what, what, what the fuck? Oh, no, Naomi, come on. Come on. It's not the last time. This is not the By the way, why I point out in the comments that the person who wrote Robbie is the only comedian who didn't think I was gay wrote correctly so. That, that is oh, true. That's okay. it. That's oh, it. Down. We have the facts. We have the facts. We have that. I know my gaze. Uh, so, you know your gay, sorry. I should never have doubted your gay spotting power. You know. Yeah, gaydar, yeah. The so gaydar is on fleek. Uh <laughs> Ah, uh, guys, guys, guys. This is this is a weird tack we've got off on, and I'm here for it. Um So Robbie, how how's everything? You're in LA at the moment? Yes, I'm in LA. Um, by the way, for those popping off in the comments, first of all, I don't want uh, emails or texts. I don't care. I'm joking the entire time. If you take anything I say seriously, I don't care. Um, I'm in LA. I'm quarantining, quarantining, whatever it is. Um, enjoying myself, I think, actually, which I feel bad about, but yeah, that's good. Cool. I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad about feeling good. That's a, that's that's some uh, that's some Catholic levels of guilt yeah. right there. Yeah, so I started high with the Catholic levels of guilt, which in Ireland I believe is pretty strong. No, mm. it's pretty it's pretty strong. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think everybody's like raised Catholic here pretty much, it's like ninety eight percent. It's changing. We're getting uh, we're getting. Are a there bit any more Jews in, in Ireland? So, I didn't want to bring up the pogroms, but since you've gone there, uh, no, no, there was, there's a very small communities of Jewish people in Ireland. Uh, a lot came here after the war and stuff like that because we were new oh children during the war. Um, but we did ha we've did. we had had one uh, sitting member of government that has been Jewish and um, he ended up getting ousted, but he also was more famous for having a smut book, like a like a dirty novel he wrote. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know about yeah. the smut. You didn't know about the smut? I can't I even remember. Smut, like, I, smut I know is he, such a great word. It's <laughs> such a great word. Smutty, smutty. Uh, man, the <laughs> comments are really popping off. Uh, we have Bryson Wallace uh, saying, enjoying herself. Can you believe it? I, I, I can believe it. Are, yeah. we say, are you saying we're a bad company, Bryson? Come on, man. Well, it's not to enjoy. And look, people <laughs> want me now to tell them their sexuality. Came to see Mary, stayed to be told my sex. Melanie. <laughs> you know what? Mel uh, we'll get to Melanie at the end. We will reveal somebody's <laughs> sexuality at the end of the podcast. <laughs> if you want me to tell you your sexuality, leave a comment in the comments and we will try and nail it. That's the best answer <gasps> I've ever heard in my life. Uh, Give me a margin of... Sexuality is a spectrum and it's hard to put labels on something. I agree, which is why when I do it and I get it right, <laughs> it's that much more impressive. It's pretty. Uh, 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 so uh, we're just like, that's it. It's like, you've come to be read by Robbie Hoffman. Uh, guys, send us in comments if you want. Uh, will we do a speed round later on in the show? We'll do a speed round of uh, yeah. reading yeah. sexualities. Yeah, yeah. If you want your sexuality read by Robbie Hoffman, much like your runes, just uh, comment below. Uh, uh, yeah, so we were touched a bit on religion there. You and moving around. You're not originally from LA, are you? You're from New York. No, I'm from New York in Canada. I spent my early childhood in New York, and then I migrated up to Canada, and I grew up uh, predominantly in Montreal and then Toronto. Oh wow, that must have been yeah. a bit of a change, a bit of shifting gear. Uh, yeah, it was. I mean. I'm like, it's so funny when I was a kid, I was also just talking about that. When I was a kid, I was so proud to be American, especially moving mm -hmm. to Canada. And then you get to Canada and they're so Canadian and kind and nice and lame, in my opinion, that like nicer people were lame, but it's <laughs> the better way to be. I mean, I came in aggressive. 
mm-hmm. um, you know, not friendly. Everybody was friendly. I was like a per- like for no reason. And I was very proud to be an American. And now with everything going on in America, it's like, I'm always like, I'm Canadian. Remember, I'm Canadian. You know, I'm so proud to be Canadian now, but um, both countries, you know, I, it's yeah. just, yeah, it was a shift for sure. But I'm really, I'm really grateful I came up or I started stand up in a place like Toronto and Montreal mm-hmm. because I think they, there was just uh, more quality um, mm-hmm. to be had there in terms of the work you could do versus like the very generalized scenes of America, which are just like these huge scenes where, mm-hmm. you know, there's not like a lot of specifics. I-, I can't explain it, but basically the difference is basically starting in Toronto, for instance, starting in Montreal, I would do seven minute open mic sets. And in New York, mm-hmm. if you start there, you have two minute open mic sets. The type of comedy oh. I do, the seven minute really ended up working for some breathing room and for getting to cultivate the material I really wanted mm-hmm. to do. And who I yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I find that even in, uh, say, like the three scenes I have most experience of are probably Dublin, uh, sort of more rural Ireland, places like Cork, is, it, which is a city. I'm not calling Cork rural. Please don't ki- at me, Cork people. Uh, Still at second century. Uh, Cork and London. And you can really see the stylistic differences between the three scenes. Like uh, Cork people right. are very, very good mm-hmm. storytellers. Dublin, uh, London people are very punchy, very quick, kind of New York style. And then Dublin is kind of a little bit in between. And it's just to do with the amount of stage time you get when you start. I think you see the style really develop. Yeah, Um, and I will say, I I just performed in London for a while last year. I was there for some months and it was amazing. Um, mm -hmm. I came, I went to London, like when I was just starting out comedy, I went to Europe and I did mics there when I was like really new and couldn't get shows. Yeah. And I remember the mics being really bad, but now going back and having some credentials and getting on great shows, the shows mm-hmm. were really good. And a lot yeah. of them, which reminds yeah. me of New York, New York and London have this thing where like, you could do five amazing shows in a row and they're really good shows. And LA is like, maybe you do two great shows a week. They're great, but there's not as many great shows every night. If that makes sense. It's a little less intense in terms of uh, the hustle. Stand up yeah. Now I do no time. shows and I'm no longer a comedian. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's or I just didn't know that was that now. I didn't know there was that uh, big difference between, I mean, I didn't know New York would be more of a hub for stand up comedy, but I, I was always imagined that LA would be the same thing. But no, so it's like, I would be like open mics in LA would be the same thing, like two minutes sort of uh, deal. Yeah, no, I think, first of all, I just realized the men were on the show. Like, I've literally no, we're just here in the corner. only been talking to Mary. Like, I had. <laughs> I, I literally, my screen has just directed to the two men <laughs> next to me. And I'm like, oh, really? I'm, I'm shook by it. I was like, I heard the voice. I was like, who's there? And it's like, oh, there's these two guys here as well. No, um, the I, mean, I look completely shocked when you, when you spoke up. Um, oh. But the metaphor imagine, right there. The metaphor yeah. right there for well, everything. I imagine right. it's what, like, when a woman spoke up in the 50s, what they would have thought. Like, who? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's what oh, just, like, we've come room. full circle, where it's like, now a man just spoke, and I'm like, what? Who's? <laughs> and it's a whole other show. Yes, I yeah. think you're right in terms of the mic scene. Like, mm-hmm. mic scene and show scene is obviously different. You have to kind yeah. of graduate from the mic scene to get to the show scene. Um, and I don't yeah. really believe there's a shortcut for that. But um but yes the mic scene in la you can do a million mics a day and they're i think two minutes three minutes some might be five minutes um and but the shows you can do shows every day but the caliber of the shows every day Mm. you even if you have five booked shows maybe two of them are great or three of them are great and i mean Mm. packed good audience good acts the whole thing it's getting more, it's getting better. And I think as more New York, a lot of New York comics have migrated here. Um, mm-hmm. And so, and they're making shows and that's happening. But New York in general, it's such a hustling city and people don't really go to bed versus like after work, people are still jacked up and go to comedy shows. And so you can have five booked great mm-hmm. shows and they're all great. And that's what London felt like when I was there. And maybe I didn't have enough of a peak of it and I was only doing the, the best, you know, really good shows mm-hmm. in a yeah. row there, but. Um, it felt like boom, boom, boom yeah. versus LA. Yeah. It's a 
little slower. Yeah. Um, we're going to have, uh, we do a bit every week where we bring on a comedian. We're going uh, to just do five minutes bits about something to do with quarantine or something to do specifically. We're going to have Naimai on in a minute, but first I just need to acknowledge something first here in the comment section. Robbie has called me out as anti-Semitic publicly on Twitter, so I don't need any more reads at the moment. Uh, I feel Why like that's we're reading your sexuality. I don't give a shit what you want or don't want. <laughs> I feel like that's a semi. <laughs> uh, somebody who does want a sexuality check is Sarah Davidson. Sarah Davidson wants a sexuality check. Okay, we'll have to keep we'll have to keep um, list of the people who want and and this is final word. If I get it wrong, you have to be that sexual. Here's also the rule: <laughs> you don't get it wrong. You must you don't get it wrong. now live your life as that sexuality. If I come to find out you went back to your what you thought you were, I find it personally very insulting and, and homophobic. That's it. Called out. Called out. Uh, guys, so uh, we're going to bring on Naimai. He's going to tell us about his cultural learnings of moving to Ireland. Uh, David, if you're ready, please. Okay. We can't hear it. David's meant to be playing a jingle, but like the jingle. Oh. A segment. We've been talking for a little while. Why don't we have a segment? Oh. Hey, give it up hey. for Naimai. Hi. Hello, how are you? Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, um, I'm Naimai. Um, I'm originally from. Uh, Vietnam, um, also known as uh, Healthy China. <laughs> uh, so I've been here since uh, oh, I moved to Ireland since uh, since September, and you know, and these are some of the things I learned so far. Um, so since I moved to Ireland, um, I'm, I've been quite fascinated by the concept of the black and tans. <laughs> like, like the, the, this, the, the thing is, like I don't know, like when I first heard it, I thought you know, Irish people were just really racist. I eventually learned that they were racist for a very good reason. <laughs> and uh, you know, like, you can imagine, like you know, black and tan. When, you, when people say black and, it, it can either be the black and tans, and then you have black and tan. You know, that's what I mean, and because you know, like tan is something that Irish people aspire to have. Um, and, uh, what is black and tan? Yeah, yeah we have to address this now yeah, before exactly. we go. Ahead. Time out, time out, time out. <laughs> I feel like there's a huge American audience watching this and I don't know what who the black and tans were as a for, as opposed to just random racism. Uh, I'll give it to the Irish to talk about this. I'm going to Naimai has a history is doing his masters in history, so I think you should need to explain this to everyone. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's... Um, so the so the black and tans are essentially uh, British police you know, when you know, Ireland was still part of the British Empire. So the, the police, uh, British police, were called black and tans, and they did horrible things. Hence, uh, the name kind of stuck. So sometimes English people Why prefer they called they... black and tan. Is that their uniform? Yeah, their uniform, yeah, uniform was a mismatch of uniforms because yeah. they were they were uh, like ex soldiers that were recruited yeah. last from World War One last minute, and they were given a mix of military and police uniforms. Oh, I see. Yeah, and then also black and tan is a type of dog, so they were just calling them dogs essentially. Yeah, so you know various meanings. You know, good reason. You know, you can be like racist for good reason and you know, bad reason, and you know. Everyone loves to have a tan, especially Irish people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, you can continue now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and um, yes, and another thing I learned so far since I moved here um, is that I, I learned a bit of Irish along the way as well. Um, you know, and Irish, Irish is a very interesting uh, language. So one of the, uh, so I learned a few phrases like uh, "dear wit," uh, which means "hello," and also and uh, the word "bow," which means uh, "cow." And actually, actually, uh, it's actually similar to the Vietnamese word for cow. So I think you know Irish people really learn uh, ancient Irish. Uh, basically, pioneered cultural appropriation. <laughs> and, and one of my brother's proudest moments was when I actually corrected my Irish friends on his Irish, right? Because, uh, for example, uh, we were at this burger place, right? And uh, he saw someone wrote on a wall, and he said to me, uh, "Look at that! Did someone just write?" Uh, the Garda, and that's when I said to him, 
No, 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 no. It's fuck the Gardi. <laughs> <laughs> Right. It's all gonna need explanations. Okay, yeah. time out, time out. We're back in the room. We're back in the room. <laughs> I can't believe we have to get the Vietnamese dude to contextualize his jokes about Ireland. Like of all of, of all of us. Like, I'm loving this. <laughs> Gary, I'm just Gary, Gary so well. It's a good thing. It's good stuff. It is good stuff. We'll give you that. Gary, you're the police. He's just saying fuck. He's just basically saying a cab. All cops are bastards. But referring to Irish police. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All much. right. Time back in. Back to nine. Back to nine. Go. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, yes, I was fascinating about uh, like Irish place, uh, places, uh, the names of Irish places, because I was really surprised when I heard the uh, places called uh, Tyler and Sligo. And what, um, once I heard those places, I mean, I don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Time out, time out again. Uh, Tala, <laughs> Tala is kind of like the New Jersey of Ireland. Okay, back, back. Uh, what, what, what's more? What, okay, anyways, time back in, back to Nye. Sorry about this, Nye. Oh, yeah, and, sorry. That's fine. And uh, the same applies to Dublin 4. Um, I heard <laughs> not so good things about it on, on another level. And uh, also, I remember also because I learned a bit of our Irish history as well. So, and I, I often share that with, with people back home, right? Because you, if you know anything about uh, anything about Vietnamese history from uh, such uh, such fascinating documentaries such as Rambo First Blood Part One <laughs> or Rambo First Blood Two, you know, because we had this thing called you know the Vietnam War, and you know the Irish had their own thing as well. Um, you know, the Irish the Irish Wars of Independence. So I t I was I talked to my dad, and I said to my dad, I said to, to him. I talked to my dad and I said, oh, you know, dad, uh, the Irish had their own uh, war of independence. Oh, and, uh, that's, and but I was like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, how long did theirs last? And then I said, two years. And um, and then he said, that's it? And I said, yeah. <laughs> and you know, that's the thing like you, I, you uh, uh, and you know, that's the thing, I still find, my, I, I still manage to find new ways to disappoint my parents, you know? <laughs> Through that. <laughs> oh, okay. no, thank you very much. Robbie, do you have any questions for Noi? Uh, I mean, his... so many. I don't understand anything <laughs> Noi has said. <laughs> like, uh, not, like uh, nothing. Uh, I didn't, really, you know, I didn't. I guess there's a lot of shit going down in Ireland. No, you know, the only yeah. thing I know about Ireland is my favorite band, the Cranberries, is from Ireland. I don't know Just if any of you one knew. One day in streams? Yep. Uh, if you knew Dolores or Yardon personally, uh, but I was, and, and people know this who are listening from Gethard or whatever, Patrick Cotner, that good for nothing booker on the show, I went to him every week and I said, let's book the Cranberries. They're touring again for some 25 year thing. They'd be excellent on the Gethard show. They're coming to America. There's no reason. We have punk bands on the show. Fine. It's like, give us, the people want her angelic voice. Like, what are you talking about? Doesn't book, doesn't book, doesn't book. We come back next season. Guess who's dead? <laughs> okay. It was sick. It, it was like the condolences I got. And then he goes, he has the nerve in the room, the dead silence where I'm clearly mourning a tremendous loss. R.I.P. Cotner, thank you. <laughs> tremendous loss. He goes, well, maybe we can get the rest of the band. The rest of the band? <laughs> Have you lost your goddamn mind? He should have been fired on the spot. <laughs> are we so, blaming Patrick Cotner for yeah, we are the so weird and Zesh? No. Okay. Wow. It's like that. Cotner, you have been called out publicly. Uh, if you want to come on and uh, dispute that, please reach out. We will get you on. And you and Robbie can discuss how you murdered Dolores O'Riordan. Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> I mean, well, she would have been safe. What if she came to our show the night that something went wrong? Hmm. We don't know. We don't she know. We don't know. Here. Oh, uh, we, uh, Emily, uh, sorry, what am I doing, Emily? Sorry, Mary is, uh, is pointing on the comment section that we did get, you did get Marsha on that show. Uh, and they're not from Scotland, though. They're from Pity Me in Durham, which has got to be the best town name ever. Pity Me. 
Like, and it sounds as aw- it sounds awful as the name suggests, judging from the descriptions. Uh, now, do you have anything else you want to add to us? Um, no. I, um, well, I still find. Well, I'm not. I still find it surprising that no one really likes RTA. Uh, that's <laughs> that's that's the Irish state television network for those not from Ireland. Anyways, <laughs> this is like a um, Ireland one hundred and one online course. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm I'm integrating very well at the moment. How many Vietnamese <laughs> people? How many Vietnamese people are in Ireland? Um, three. Three. It's <laughs> yeah. difficult. Like, are there any black people in Ireland? Uh, we. I think there's a, uh, yeah. there's a few. Yeah, there's, there's a few, few. Uh, black Irish uh, black Irish comics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're mostly they're mostly first gen gen generous so like uh, or second generation. Like uh, basically Ireland. Like I remember when we got black people in Ireland for the first time. It was like, it was a very exciting time. And we were like, ooh! Because my town was one of- three Vietnamese people and zero Jews still? Is there still a moratorium? Uh, no, we got some Jews. Sure there's so about we had, 20 Jews around. Sure we had a minister for state, okay? A minister for state. Give us a break. You know, you know right, he did well right, for himself. Right. We, yeah, we, also have, we also have Amy Huberman's Jewish, I believe. And, uh, She's like an actress here, and she's the the aforementioned or she, our state broadcaster. And she's like every show they make, she's the star of. So right, there's yeah. a bit of that. David, That's it. David looks Jewish. <laughs> they, I they, have they, been told that. Yeah, seriously. So that's close. Are you that's one of the like the Jew if I've ever seen one? He's well, not surviving the next Holocaust. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, so yeah, Steve, Irish. Sure, get in. I mean, okay, so I'm not surviving the next one. David's not surviving the next one. I can't uh, Robbie, right. maybe Nye. I don't think Nye. So it's all on Pedro, the Portuguese guy, the colonialist I guy. Know. You know, no, no, it's not colonial anymore. If anything, I'm just going to be my little fish village and just be there. Be like, no, no, I don't care. I'm just fishing. Don't, don't talk to me. That's all we do. That's our new technique. That's our strategy. We just pretend we didn't do anything. We just stay in our corner eating fish. Mmm, yummy. Delish as a lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. I had to. I had oh, yeah, to. Yeah. I didn't think about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope uh, there's no more Holocaust. I call it fishing too. I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to ask a question about um, your special body. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> professional. It's like, you know what? Guys, I got it in the hook. Let's put it back. Yeah, exactly. <gasps> Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I heard, maybe I've got this completely wrong. If I do, this question's pointless. But that you, um, when you did that, um, I'm nervous special last year. It was the first time <laughs> when you did that hour. That was the first time you did that full hour in one go. Is that right? Yes. How did you know that? He's the best. He's the best yeah. researcher. This is why we never, I had never done an hour on stage before my special. I, mm-hmm. I thought I could do it. Like, you know, obviously you're like, of course I could do it. But when they called me, I think that they thought that I had been doing an hour. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and really I haven't been, but I don't let them know. <laughs> and I kind of just, I, I kind of, I got it right after get third and it came at perfect time. Cause I was like, what am I going to do in this in between time? And mm-hmm. then they were like, Hey, we're starting these new specials that we'll do at the festival. We wanted um, to do yours. Would you, would you do it? And I had six weeks from that point until the taping, and I only had one taping. So I just, um, I did so much stand up in that six weeks, you can't <laughs> imagine. And I just, I, I don't know. It's just that 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 adrenaline just kicks in, and the pressure of it of having to do an hour, and it had me all ready to be a great hour, and I will never have toured it. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's was, was just amazing. Was just insane, but yeah. um, but I just knew it would. I just had a feeling that it would, you know, just for lack of better, like you have to think this way. I believe, but yeah. I thought it would be. Once I felt good about it, I thought it would be as good an hour as even if I toured it for a year. Mm-hmm. I did it kind of in twenty minute chunks. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't sure. I never had the chance to do the whole hour at once. And then probably a week into it, uh, or uh, two weeks before it, um, you know, you start, I really, I started doing like 10 minutes from the first chunk with the 10 minutes from the second chunk and seeing how that flowed. 
I started breaking up where I would do 20 minutes because typically I was only getting 20 minute spots. Now I get booked for an hour. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's really funny. Like now I'm headlining all the time, but I really wasn't, I was probably featuring and middling. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, it's like after that hour, then I got booked at the New York comedy festival to headline. And that was the second time I had headlined because the first time was just at the special yeah. and then I yeah, brought yeah. that hour to New York maybe a month later. And then I've started doing that hour. I kind of toured the hour after I'd already taped the hour, um, which is a backwards way of doing it. But, uh, but for me, I think really worked. It also mm -hmm. works well with how I write. Typically it's like, if I don't get it right the first go, like I do a lot of editing and working like that, but if mm -hmm. it doesn't feel great from like, it almost doesn't change drastically from the first time mm -hmm. I pen something to the paper. It either hits it yeah. and I feel mm -hmm. great about it or it doesn't work. Like slogging through mm -hmm. something, it's not like I can fix it that way. I can't really, it has to just hit it from uh, right away. Um, and I can tweak things, but really mm -hmm. the, the essence of it remains almost unchanged. Um, mm -hmm. And that's how the hour felt. I did get to do it two nights before the taping. I ran a lot of it, probably like 40 minutes at a bar in Toronto um, okay. that maybe seven people were at. Oh, God. Cool. Um, wow. So I just ran it, but I didn't run it without, like I had notes and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't clean. And then the first time I, I did it and I did it, I, I got to do it with notes and stuff like that. But the first time I did it without anything was when I taped it, but that's the kind of pressure I would need to know what I wanted to talk about. Like if I didn't think it was being taped or anything, I would look at my notes. I would look at things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But once it's taped, I just go a mile a minute. Once I'm in it, it's just everything comes to me. And it's either I knew within the first minute if I was going to hit it or not. Also, that day I got my period. And it was a very, very bad period. I was like mm -hmm. really in a tremendous amount of pain. Um, and I have fainted before on my period. Now, mm -hmm. I don't faint every time on my period. But I mm -hmm. have when there's TMI, tremendous. I feel like I, I, there's this is not medically. I have two sisters. This like, is fine. I, I don't know if like this is medically back, but I feel like I'm losing so much blood and I like my mm. body can't take it. That's mm. when I faint. And it's only when I'm standing, which is great if you're a stand up because you only have to stand. Yeah. So that day I just ate as much as possible. I remember being like, just like eat. I like had a steak and two rolls. And I remember just trying to get the bread down. And then I knew within the first minute on stage, if you watch it, you can kind of see my click. It's like on stage, like when I get up there, I'm like kind of like assessing the room. Yeah, and yeah. then the first thing that hits, I'm like flying. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a great hour. So I just feel that, oh, my God, we're flying. But mm. if I didn't feel that click a minute in, it would have been disastrous. And I really have no say. And it's that. called That's I'm like Nervous as well, which just called I'm it. Nervous. That's a perfect <laughs> name. Perfect name. Yeah, uh, I was nervous. I take nice. uh, we're just going to say goodbye tonight. I think will we play the jingle one more time. Oh, well, please, please. I love the jingle. Yeah, Hurry. okay. Hurry Come up. On, David. Put him Hurry. Where is it? I'm just going to put everyone on the spot. I'm going to put Nye on the spot as well. As the jingle plays, I'm just going to cut directly to him and he has to do his best dance just to say goodbye. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? Segment. A segment. Segment. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we have a segment? segment. Bye. Oh, did it come back to oh, me? I, uh, I love that jingle. That's jingle. Uh, we, uh, we have from Emily again. We have Oh My God, I Get That Too, which I think was a reference to the period painting. Um, and but also a serious question. So you do what's it? Here, let me read this. So you you do wait. Why am I finding it so hard to read this? Do you do anything to help you get into the writing mindset? Do you have a place where you like to write or does it come to you anywhere inspiration strikes? Yeah, I think it's, it's that it comes to me anywhere inspiration strikes. I find it difficult to sit down and just write. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very deadline based. So it's like, this was perfect. I had six weeks to have a perfect hour. I was mm -hmm. like, I don't know how, I don't know when it's like being in university when I would have a paper due Wednesday and it would be like Saturday. I'd be like, I don't know how, mm -hmm. I don't know what mechanics, 
what process. All I know is that Wednesday I'm handing in a paper. I don't know. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's no, yeah. I cannot foresee how it gets done right now. I do not know yeah. when but I will, know like, but I it. just know that Wednesday I will have a great paper to hand in. There's no question. Like it's just this, I kick into some mode under mm -hmm. pressure and I hate that because I have, for instance, I have something now due um, on, well, it's due like Thursday, ideally. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I've had two weeks, guys. Yeah, yeah. I've had two <laughs> weeks and I'm like at the tip of it. It's like a slog now and a slog yeah. doesn't work with me. I know that this will probably be scrapped and it's just going to be maybe Wednesday night and mm -hmm. I'm going to be miserable until then. Like, I'm just going to be so, like, I wish I could do it now, but I truly can't sit you need to get the pressure, pressure and you need the pressure. Yeah. I don't know yeah. why or what I'm I just, think is great. I hate handing in what I don't think is great, you know, so. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have, like, I'm a terrible, like, I'm the... Uh, I'm not a writer at all. I find it very hard to sit down and write. So I'm actually one of those weirdos that has to just like have an idea and get on stage, and try to work it out at an open mic right. or like something like that, or fit it in, in between some old material and new material. And so I'm finding it very hard to write right now. And like, but it, it is all that pressure. I think there's something about comedy. If you have that pressure or that immediateness, it just brings out something. Oh, especially yeah. about a bit. I mean, writing stand up bits, which I, you know, haven't been, it's like, yeah, I'm I'm a little bit like you, Mary, in that way that I do work it out on stage a yeah. lot, and I also have a written thing. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll jot an idea down, and then when I get to the mic, I'm always on time at shows, mm -hmm. if not early. Um, and and that's because I don't know. I do like sitting in the spot that I am, and I will go through my stuff and be like, you know what, I'm doing all new tonight, and mm -hmm. I'll just force myself in such a low amount of pressure to take all this material in. What yeah. are some couple things that I want to hit? And then I let it go wherever else it, it goes in between those moments that I want to hit, you know, everything else is improvised, but there are some key things that I was like, what made the bit funny to me initially? I mm -hmm. have to drive that home. But um, that type of pressure getting to the show and being on in say 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people in the back, like there are some people who are like me and some people who are chatty or whatever, but I think, it is funny, like when I'm like clearly like writing or something, and somebody's still chatting to you. It's like, dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? When somebody sees oh, you writing, or they see you like in your head about something, or they'll see me like sit, and I'm like, I, I get, I'm now at a place where I go, hey, I'm just going through some stuff. I don't think it's rude, but it mm. used to be like when you were like younger, it was like people like talking to you. It's like. Yeah, you know, so I'm such that. a last minute preparer. Like maybe they were during the day. They're like, I want to talk about this. I haven't even thought about it until I get there. I, I, I think that might just be a clash of preparation style because I often catch myself being the interrupter and being like, oh, shit, sorry. You know what I mean? But I think right. that's like I know I like to chat to get ready. You know what yeah, I mean? Some people yeah. like to chat. And then and I'm the same. I'm the asshole when I'm ready or whatever. I'm chatting you up. <laughs> yeah, I also yeah, love yeah. a double standard. I'll be like, <laughs> I'll, I'll interrupt your flow, your shit. I don't give a shit. If I'm yeah. ready to have a beer, I'm like, I'm ready. So yeah, I need to talk about this, so I don't care. Yeah. Uh, and that's a nice attitude to have, though, because it's it very, that very freeing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna start interrupting everybody when I'm ready for it. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah I'm still ready, guys. Yeah. I have no idea. I'm gonna yeah, fucking yeah. kill it. I can see you're looking at notes. Writing. I don't care. <laughs> I just fucking yeah. slap the notebook out of your hands. Like, fuck this, man. You're ready. <laughs> Robbie, yeah, I'll have you close just, my notebook. Like, yeah. Empowered the men to fucking dethrone me. I feel like oh, that's what great. you just thought. Like, yeah, thanks, Robbie. Yeah, <laughs> we don't need men implementing this double standard. You have enough of your own double standards. The whole world's a double standard. <laughs> the whole world's a double standard. <laughs> I said it be nice. I didn't say be right. <laughs> oh. We, we, have, we, have a, we have a good question in from the crowd here. What's your favorite thing to do to procrastinate? I clean, actually. Oh, You'll know wow. I have something to do if my place is spotless. Nice. Like nice. I'm cleaning yeah. crevices. I'm emptying a drawer. I'm going through old things. Yeah. Um, I'm cleaning. I'm getting errands done. I've never mailed more things. <laughs> if I have something to do, you better believe taxes are done. Everything I've not wanted to do is done. Like Can errands specifically returning things, going to the pharmacy, 
uh, scheduling a laser appointment, truly anything yeah. gets done. But it would also always be something like not creative at all, right? Like to progress. It would always be like something like, oh, I just need to clean this thing here. I need to write it's this thing. It's never like, creative. Yeah. yeah exactly. Creative yeah, yeah. endeavors like pain me to no end. Like I'm, I'm like exhausted thinking about how I'm going to get done what I like it. And it's, and it's all, and it's also at the same time, what I want to be doing with my life. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like what I love. And it's also like, how am I going to do this? Like, this is mm -hmm. just like, I will do anything to not do it. Yeah. And it's definitely not going to be creative. It's definitely not going to be creative. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. See, I, I, I do a thing where I just keep, I don't, I procrastinate by starting other creative projects and just have like seven or eight going at the one time as the lads will attest it. And it's just like, ah, mm. getting fried, but I eventually finish one of them by just doing so much until it works. But I don't so, know if that's an ADD thing. So right now, are you procrastinating to do something else? Is this like, yeah, yeah. I am like, for instance, today, yesterday night, I thought I was waking up early. I have this thing due on Thursday and I was going to give it another go today. I was like, mm. you're going to wake up, pep in your step. I had a beautiful sleep. And then I checked my calendar. I'm like, fuck, I have this podcast. Why did I say yes to this podcast? <laughs> and then I blame you guys for fucking up my day. There's no reason I can't get back onto my day. It will be, I'll have a full day ahead of me. It's, <laughs> like, it's only noon, my time that this happened. But in my head, I would be like, well, you have to do that. You already did a podcast. You know, it's like, there's no reason something. for the day to be a wash, but I will wash it. There's a big chance I wash it. Yeah, <laughs> completely fair, completely fair. Guys, will we have another song? Yeah, yeah let's have another song. Yeah, will we bring back the wonderful Mary? Let's bring let's her back to the stream. Let's have, give it up Hi. for Mary Catch it. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> And I'd like, I'd like, I'd like to shake this cup for sake of mine, said I'm in. But who am I to say things are gonna go my way? And it's all in my head, and I'm starting to dread. My lack of words for you. My head, my head, my head is rushing with too many thoughts. And will this, will this, will this, or will this fleeting feeling last? But who am I? Things are gonna go my way And it's all in my head And I'm starting to dread My lack of words for you Woo! Yeah, Woo! Unreal. By the way, I've been calling Allie Mary the entire time. And yeah, I, I do want to point it out. Yeah, I just want to say. Was funny. Uh... <laughs> oh shit! I only realized that was because her name popped up. You only had the names up for a second in the beginning, My and then God. that's what I saw. Like I was like, but to not correct me on that is wild. It's not like I was just pronouncing a name. I, I just thought it was funny. I was gonna leave it go, and also it's a thing in Ireland just to call girls Mary. You know what I mean as a nickname because it used to be a super common name. So I was just like, I'll just let it slide. It'll be funny. Uh, and so okay, Mary came on and she started playing. I was like, oh, they're both Mary. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I would have noticed there's two Marys, and I'm like, no, you moron. That's Mary. That must be okay. Allie. 
<laughs> All right, well, well, for everyone at home, and especially for Robbie Hoffman, I'll just go through and pop up everyone's name. Hi, I'm Ali O'Rourke. This is how you spell my name, okay, if you want to follow us social media. This is David Strush, <laughs> which is... <laughs> that was like a three-second delay oh, there. That was, was I was trying to get the name up, okay? Uh, <laughs> we have, of course, the wonderful Mary Catches, whose names you've seen. Uh, we have all the way from Portugal. We have the big P, the man himself, Pedro Guerra. I really want to go to Portugal. Come on, uh, and of course, Robbie Alpen. Name and big. <laughs> okay, so we got everyone's names. I probably should have done this to start. It's probably bad. I've been a bad party host. Let's be honest. Like no, uh, no, because like we gotta leave some mystery. So people are like, I really want to know the names of the people. So like, let's just wait fifty minutes and ten seconds until we get to know who's on the show. I like it being a mystery because uh, you can guess everybody's name. <laughs> Mary, I need to call you out on something in the comment section. Why did you put that in the comments? <laughs> because I like to call myself. <laughs> you just heckled yourself. That's what I did. <laughs> what a wild time we live in. Uh, heckling people like, online. <sighs> Better uh, to heckle yourself than your own self. <laughs> that, that, that is amazing. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, there's a couple of weird questions I want. Not weird questions. I want things I need to know out of Robbie Hoffman. The pants from your uh, CGP episode. What happened to them? Did they end up in Etsy? Oh, the cow pants. My producer the found those cow pants the day of the show. Um, nice. And I decided in Gethard fashion to just wear them for the show. Um, no, they didn't. Uh, you know what? I got them. I decided maybe I'll keep these pants. You kept them. I'm Good yelling. Time. I've been told that I'm, I'm getting a noise complaint. <laughs> oh, is that the girlfriend? <laughs> Please get her on camera if she wants to. That'd be amazing. I'm getting a noise complaint. <laughs> Can you imagine? Okay, oh, anyway. Wow. Oh, early. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm no, am I yelling Beyonce. the entire time? Am I yelling the entire time? I no. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's it's anti Semitic because we talk loud. And this is a way to silence. First of all, silencing women and silencing Jews. Am I surprised? Not at all. <laughs> no, 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 it's like, my whole life. You know, it's like they're like Jews are loud, Jews are loud. It's like we're like a small people. We have to be, you know what I mean? We're here. We would like to tell you we're about. still here. It's anti Semitism, exactly. Exactly. You know? It's been called out. It's been called. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, so I still have the pants. I shorten them, and I think I overshorten them. I, I don't really want to talk about it. It depresses me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a very awkward situation. I had a friend who was a really good kayaker who had a cow paint scheme on his boat, very similar to your pants. But he won okay. a competition one time, and we was on the trip. We all started mooing him. But you know, moo sounds like boo. I like that. So wow. there's a whole moment where a friend, after ages, gets a European medal. Sounds like he thinks all his friends are booing him for like oh, just a split shit. second. I was like, oh, I wouldn't God. survive that. I would not oh. survive that. Uh, the guilt. If you're listening, Bartaz, I'm sorry, my friend. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you about was uh, your episode of Working Moms that you wrote. Yeah. Um, she got high at work. Yeah, so the thing about writing on a television show is, yes, I wrote that episode, but we also write all of the episodes. How working in television works is the whole writer's room kind of thinks of all the stories, and then writers take home individual stories to write them up, like, mm -hmm. professionally. Um, so, uh, you know, we always give credit to the full room, kind of. Um, I wrote that episode. I took it home, obviously. But, um, yeah. yeah, she got high on work with microdosing. Was that the episode? Yeah, was she uh, still? Well, I don't know. You wrote it. Uh, I know, but, you know, people <laughs> always ask me about episodes of television that I wrote. And you have to understand that I wrote this maybe two years ago. Yeah. And then I don't, oh. I'm not on set. Like, once we finish writing, I typically move on to another show that I write on. And then it goes and it shoots. But I'm already mm. writing the next show. So mm. it's like. It's like by the time the episode comes out, this is like two years after I wrote it. Fair, fair. But what the question actually, what I wanted to ask you was, have you ever got high at work? And if have so, we would admit it. 
No, I haven't. I've only recently started getting high a little bit. I'm not much of a high person, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I have a very nice weed pen. I take a, a haul of it in an evening with some wine. It's delightful. Nice, um, nice. But I don't, I don't fuck around during the day or, or anything. And I have to really have like nothing going on. If I have any type of a stress, it's not going to be good for me. I have to feel like, okay, the day is over. I'm now like, can do this. Now um, I can be Hollywood Robbie. Uh <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't attempt to do anything high, but kudos to people who can. I don't really get, I, I, I I'm just like, oh my God, actually my producer, um, Sam Varela can, who helps me with a lot of my live shows and stuff. She can attest. I went to my buddy, Will Miles, he had a barbecue and a lot of people with weed and this and that. Um, just, it was like an afternoon fun event. And I had a haul, but I was like, ah, I could be one of the guys. I can be one of, <laughs> you know, look at me. I'm like a young person. I'm at a barbecue. There's nothing to do. It's a beautiful day in Los Angeles. Why? I can't be young. So let me be young. And I took a haul of it and I yeah. lost. I was like at this party and I was just like, I then excused myself. I almost fainted really. Um, I went home, I got an Uber home and I forgot these glasses, which are tiny and at the barbecue. Like I had taken <laughs> my glasses off, which is obscene. And I almost never saw them again. I messaged her. I was like, are my glasses? They would be behind this thing. She's like, they're here. Found these glasses, which is insane. And um, yeah, so I almost lost my vision that day and my mind. Oh, and it was, it was unreal. That was like when I tried to do something in the day and be cool and fun and young. And it just yeah. doesn't work for me. Doesn't work for you. Uh, yeah. Um, Mary, first off, I want to ask Mary a couple of things. Did you make those earrings yourself? Because I know I you, you're. Let's have a look. Let's have a bit wow. of appreciation yeah, for the crazy the the nope. quarantine clay fun time. No, <laughs> that's how you do it. I just wanted to call those out and just like address them. And yeah, they are gorgeous, uh, as Emily pointed out. Uh, <laughs> but but I want I want to know is do you have any questions? I know you're a fan of Robbie. Do you have any questions for Robbie? Oh, I don't have any questions. I didn't know I was going to. <laughs> on the spot, on the spot, on the spot. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, I guess, um, what do you think my sexuality is? <laughs> oh. oh, Mary, what's your sexuality? I will say this screen. straight. Okay, this is final, Mary. You're comfortable with that? Great. <laughs> okay. You are oh. straight but questioning. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh. So come at me. Fucking come at me in the comments and come at me with the emails. Robbie at RobbieOffman.com. Okay. I you know what the name is. The very wow. specific sexuality that I nailed. We oh. have this. Wow. Wow. Uh, That's a power. Apparently, uh, um, okay. So we have a few more minutes left in the show and we have a request here. When are we getting post performance pints hosted by Robbie Hoffman? You know what? I'm it? happy to take over the hosting. Okay, I'm going to take myself out of the stream for a sec then, if you want. Will I, will I, or do you want me as a guest? Okay, I want you as a guest. Put me as a thing. Let's go through. There's a couple of people who wanted their sexuality up the top. We had this girl, Melanie, and this. Sarah Davidson, who I believe I know. And Bryson, okay. obviously. Bryson wants his sexuality? No. Uh <laughs> He said he didn't, but we'll give it to him right. anyway because that's what, I'm saying. Well, that's what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> Who? Okay. Well, put the picture up. I would love to have the person. Is there a way for them to call in? Because it's also like I have to like really feel the person. It's hard okay. just on the comment. All right. How, how about if we do Melanie this? Melanie Chudik, is Melanie. she able? My best Melanie. friend. Oh, hold on. How about this, guys? One sec. I'm going to paste the link to this room. If mm -hmm. anybody wants to come live on air and have their sexuality I'm read, I'm just do it. follow this air. Follow this link, <laughs> and I will pop you through. And I tell you, what, while we're doing that, we normally play out with a song at the end. But Mary, do you want to play a bit of music now? And we'll give a few more minutes, and we'll I guess, go back to. I guess it could do that. I mean. Post performance pints hosted by Robbie Hoffman. Woo. Are you okay with that, Robbie? <laughs> yes. Okay, I guess I Mary. Play it to you. All right. This song is called "Endless Bummer." All right. Jordan. 
Para mim, tu e eu, tu mais foda e é mais alma Eu tô com mais que chora, é mais palma Just because I want to Really good. I was Ooh, in the that was amazing. Thank you. I really got into that. I, I just realized like you were painting. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, I told you. Totally 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 get stuck in your head. Uh, we have <laughs> some callers in. Oh, first of all, will we go back to? Uh, we never did Nye. Will we bring Nye back on? Right. Yeah. Nye want his sexuality read. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, find out. <laughs> I know. How are you? Hello. How are you getting on? Is that enough energy for you, Robbie? This is great. So let's get some of these. Let's get some of these dikes up. Okay. Oh, did you read now yet? Okay. Right. All right. Uh, oh, you guys, I want to be read. He has to want. <laughs> Do you want it now? Do you want um, it? I mean, that's no. Yeah, why not? You know, it's Sunday. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Okay, sorry, we met that too. No, I, thank you very much for appearing on Post Performance Finds. We'll chat you, you later. Uh, Mary, we'll chat you in a little bit. Okay, thank you so much. Such wonderful music. Uh, okay, so we have two more. We have three people ready to go. First up, we have the wonderful Melanie. How are we, Melanie? <laughs> I'm Hi, I'm good. How are you? How y'all doing? Do you want your sexuality read right here? I'm yes, Melanie. please guide me. You agree to the terms? This is final? This is final. I, I let me have it, please. Okay, you understand that most people would say you shouldn't tell somebody what they are, but we don't subscribe to that here. Uh -oh. It's nice to be told what to do sometimes. <laughs> okay, great. Here we go. Here we go. You are. I'm ready. You know what? You're also straight, but questioning. All right. Dang it! I will take that. All right. Wait, what is it? What is it? <laughs> I'm by. <laughs> You're by pretty close. It's pretty close. It's close. Now, can I ask about being by? Have you have you been with mostly men or mostly women? So I have been straight down the middle with men and women. Though um, my one ex it came out as a transgender after our relationship, but during our relationship presented as male. So right. How do I? Where does that fall? Uh, I mean, it falls as maybe presented as male and is okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it falls probably gay, honestly. Then that's use it a little more gay. No, so I mean, I'll it doesn't it. skew more. It's not a numbers game. <laughs> I was just curious. I think then you're, yeah. I, You know what? This could be the first wrong case I have. Okay. First of all, <laughs> now it's a this. little rusty. We've just started it, but I've been right up until this point. But I've been close with you, close. It's, it's. I would give myself you, a half a notch. I, I will but give you seventy five percent credit. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Melanie. Thanks, Thanks Melanie. for joining us. Bye, guys. Oop, cut her off a bit roughly there. Oh, My bad. Bye. Sorry, Thanks. guys. I know you said I was a call in. Bye this phobic. has never been a call in show. What? Bye, phobic, Ali. Okay, so next up we have the wonderful Trill House. Okay, let's see Trill House. Okay, now we're talking. Trill House is pansexual. Yeah. Yeah. Bingo. Okay. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> Do you have any questions for Robbie before we get rid of you, Trill House? No, and I was prepared to give you one hint. And my no, one what hint... was your hint? I didn't even need it, did I? You didn't, but my hint was that I live in Montreal, which I think says. Uh, Oh, oh my god, where do you live in Montreal? 
Uh, the Southwest currently. The Southwest, like Lachine, like Verdun. <laughs> I live in Verdun. I'm Joseph, thirty-two sixteen Joseph. I live a little bit deeper than that, but yeah. Oh, you live in the <laughs> avenues? Yeah, I live uh, almost. Oh God, this is so doxy. I live almost near the Douglas. <laughs> oh, I, I, I miss, I miss being close to the Douglas. Yeah, the river is beautiful. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, hello to Montreal. Bonjour. Hi. Thank you. Au revoir. Merci. Uh, as you know, I'm not a French speaker, yes. and we have one. French. Thank you. Thank you. I am a flight attendant as my day job. Uh, which always surprises people. Uh, I don't it's know okay. why, because let's face it, it's the queerest job going, Is apart it? from being a fluffer and gay porn. Uh, <laughs> not so much, with, like, yeah, there's low, There's a, quite a few queer women in there, but there's all the guys are gay, pretty much. Oh, shit, sorry, I shouldn't have that. Do you think I could be a fluffer in uh, think, the porn? Do you, you never, think men would like that? Men would like if I came and fucked them up? Little hand job. Pedro, can't uh, answer yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, you live I've in the right place. You know, like the porn industry. Oh, we have two more callers. Let's sort. Okay, this show is going on. We've never gone this long before. Okay, we have. Okay. Uh, we we have to. How many will we do? We do two more. Are you okay with two more? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do two more, and 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 go enjoy your sexuality, your newfound sexuality, folks. <laughs> okay, we have the wonderful Susie. Hi. Let's see, Susie. Ooh, hi, Susie. Okay, 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 okay. Susie, how you doing? Susie, I know you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You stand up. I do. Very funny, Thank Susie. You. Susie, I think you are. I think you're not into. I think you might be pansexual as well. And if you're not pansexual, I think you're straight but questioning. Oh. Am I wrong? No, no, straight up a lesbian. Ooh! Lesbian only. Lesbian only. Pretty you much. Yeah. I feel like I'm the last lesbian alive, but that's really nice to see another one. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have any questions for Robbie? Wow. Says, Susie? No, I, I, I mean, no, no, I don't. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank I think it. It, Thank I feel like you Thank just you. shook Susie to her core with that. <laughs> well, you know what? Yeah, Susie threw it. You know, Susie, I couldn't get a, a full read. Very stoic. Do you know what I mean? Now, mm. it's it's not like full proof, but when I'm sure of it, you'll see when I'm sure I'm right. When I'm not sure, I'm not really right. Right? <laughs> Have you noticed Fair. that? When I have to nail it off the top, I've not been wrong. Right. That is true. That is true. So that's it. So you have to like if I get a great reading, it's probably like a psychic. Like they either like no, or they're like, I'm not sure about this thing. Mm. Exactly. So that's how it is. Early days as well. It's early days of the algorithm, as you said. Yeah. The ones that I've nailed, I've nailed. Like if I know right away. Okay, let's yeah, fair, see. Fair. Okay, final caller. Unfortunately, our final caller for today. Let's give it up for Sarah D. Hello. Sarah hey, D, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Good. Where do you live? I live in Edinburgh, but I'm from LA. Live in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know Aaron Latofsky? No, I don't. Should I? Do you know Elisa Gurman? No. Do you know Sarah Bernstein? No, but I recognize Okay, her. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Sarah D. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah D, you're a lesbian. No, bye. But now I'm a lesbian, I guess. I've yeah. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Congratulations. You never have Welcome to deal to with it. men again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's my cousin in the comments. People who know Erin Latofsky, she did go to school in Edinburgh. So I like to shout out. Thank you. <laughs> uh, guys, uh, we're going to say goodbye to Sarah D unless you have a question for Abby before we go. No, I just want to say thank you very much for the picture you posted on the trans day of visibility. It was beautiful. Oh, I should clarify. Thank you. I'm ha I didn't know. Can I be honest about something? Permission to be frank, Sarah D. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't know when I posted that photo that it was trans day of visibility. 
<laughs> I just was bored and core and I missed like climbing and how I felt when I was climbing. I just decided, fuck it. I'll throw it up there. I actually don't identify as really anything. I'm she, her and the whole thing. Like I haven't really thought about it to that yeah. extent. I'm happy to be included. It's nothing like it just wasn't intentional. And I felt like for some people, they felt it was like this thing. But I should clarify for folks. Um, mm. I mean, happy trans day of visibility by all means. But it was totally accidental. And maybe it was Freudian slip. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Either way, I'm happy. Yeah. happy Your secret psycho, psychic powers. Yeah, but I still identify as a lesbian, she, her. But, you know, I don't know. It doesn't really matter anymore, does it? So, um, but that was really funny. I was like, oh, like I'm happy to be positively contributing, but I felt bad that it was accidental. I wish it was, I wish I did a good thing on purpose, but no, but me, I never do good things on purpose. It has to happen <laughs> by accident. <laughs> uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, thanks for calling in. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, guys, I think we've come to the end of the show. We've come oh, to the end. No. We've come to the end. Uh, guys, we want to give it up for Robbie Hoffman. Thank you for having you yeah, coming on the show. Robbie, you were amazing. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you so guys much for, for having me. Yeah, that was uh, brilliant. Folks, welcome. Yeah, thank guys, and so we'll say goodbye to my co-host, David Strutt and Pedro Guerra as well. See you, guys. Yeah. Nice. Lovely meeting you, Robbie. All right, Lovely guys. So I just got to talk to you. Uh, guys, this has been the Hysteria Network, uh, Post Performance Pints being the show. If you liked it, call back next Sunday when we have an episode with Riley Soliner and music from the wonderful Emma Langford with, bit, with a bit by Fiona Kenny. Uh, also, throughout the week, keep an eye out. We have loads of stuff happening on this network. Uh, I'm hosting a show called Core and Tathlon, which uh, Pedro might be making an appearance on. I have to chat with him. But anyways, guys, thank you. Goodbye. <clears throat> what the devil?